Okay. So, uh, what we uh, want to look at is uh, a, a way to uh, collectively, uh, you know, uh, visualize the several of the questions that we already solved uh, in in the same framework. So this, uh, you know, this uh, particular uh, way of looking at uh, several counting problems. Uh, in the same framework was done by, uh, you know, or, you know, at least uh, uh, to us, that is what is known, is uh, introduced by uh, you know, Giancarlo Rota, so who was the advisor of uh, Stanley. And in, uh, in uh, his work, uh, you know, uh, Stanley has written about this in uh, detail. And we are going to just look at uh, that. Okay. So what we have, uh, is the following setting. We have uh, a set B of uh, balls. Okay? And then you have a set U of urns uh, or bins or boxes. Okay? So you have, a, you have a set of boxes and you have a set of balls. Now what uh, you want to do is to distribute the balls to boxes. Right? You want to distribute all the balls to boxes. Uh, or place the balls into the urns and then uh, count the number of ways to do it. Okay, so that is all we are going to do, right? So we are going to uh, take uh, the boxes and then balls and put each uh, uh, each ball into uh, you know, some of the uh, boxes. Okay? So all the balls you want to take and then distribute to boxes, and then uh, we can we can say like you know. There are some restrictions that we want to look at. This is the general setting. So, what are the possible uh, things that you can do uh, in this, right? What kind of restrictions you can do? So, let us look at these uh, restrictions uh, one by one. So, uh, one, uh, one of the uh, things that you can think is that, uh, let us say, if you if you if you uh, you know if you have your uh, uh your boxes and then your balls right so you can say that okay there is there is no restriction at all right? we'll say that okay you you put uh you know you have to just distribute the balls to boxes you can do whatever you want right whichever way you want you can do it then uh, you can also say that okay uh, i don't want you to do uh anything uh, like that, I want you to uh, put uh, you know at most uh, one ball into uh, a box. Okay, so a box cannot contain more than one ball. That is one restriction that you can put. Right. Uh, another restriction that you can put is that uh, every box should have uh, at most, I mean, at least one ball. Say that okay every box must have at least one ball and other case you can say that every box must have at most one ball right i mean yeah so this is the first case was the, the at least one ball then you will say that okay uh, you can have zero but uh, you must uh, uh, you know not have more than one so these are uh, some kind of restrictions that you can put then what other restrictions that you can put I mean, other conditions that you can put. For example, you can say that, okay, uh, you know, I have uh, labeled the boxes, right? The boxes are different now, right? So, box one, box two, box three, box four, and boxes are labeled. Then I can ask the same question, right? With the labeled boxes, if the balls are going to the boxes, and how many different ways are there? If I allow at most one, at least one, or uh, uh, you know, arbitrary. Then you can say that, okay, my uh, uh, balls are also colored, right? You know, they are not just, uh, uh, you know, identical. They are not entirely identical, right? So I will say that, okay, they are, they are colored. So then if they are colored, then uh, how many different ways I can do it? Then you can say that, okay, the balls are colored, but the boxes are not labeled, right? They are identical. Uh, so if uh, if that is the case, 
uh, then uh, what you can what you can do right so if the yeah so if the uh, uh, if the boxes are not labeled and then the balls are uh, labeled then what you get so these kind of uh, different uh, questions you can ask and uh, you can see that there are altogether uh, 12 such uh, possibilities so let us list them so uh, one is that like each urn uh, or uh, box must have at least uh, uh, one ball in it second is that no one can can hold more than one ball inside and uh, there is no restriction on how many balls can go to uh, a box or uh, uh, an urn so then what we said is that okay so the different cases that we can have is that the balls are labeled uh, to make them distinct and the urns are also distinct so the bo both boxes and the balls are labeled then second case is that the balls are all identical but the urns are labeled and the third case is that balls are labeled and urns are identical then balls are uh, and urns both are unlabeled that they are all uh, you know all the balls are identical and all the boxes are also identical so in this case um, in this case what you can uh, uh, see is that like for each of the four cases you can ask the previous three uh, you know situations right you can ask these questions what are what happens if these are the restrictions so there are four into three, 12 uh, possible ways. So this is called the 12 fold way. Now let us try to uh, put it into a nice table, right? So you have the, you know, you have the balls, the urns, right? Then the cases that are distinguishable or labeled and the indistinguishable or unlabeled. And then uh, uh, these are the, uh, these are the four, uh, into uh, three choices right the, where the three choice right we can any number of available balls in a box is allowed uh, then uh, at most uh, one per uh, each box and uh, uh, you know uh, yeah and at least one per uh, each box right so and then you want to count out uh, you know you want to you want to find out what are the entries in each of these boxes right this one what is it what is this what is these are the the 12 cells you need, you need to fill and that will give you uh, the answer to the 12 fold uh, way question so what are these numbers so i want you to uh, stop this uh, and then think about this and fill up the numbers yourself because we have already solved all these questions so each of these questions we have uh, we have solved at least you know enough material we have covered uh, using which we can solve all these questions so uh, think about this and uh, try to work out the entries and then once you fix you know when, once you fill all the entries see whether uh, you know they match with the uh, observation that we are going to come up with okay so you know we can also look at this uh, question in terms of functions uh, as many of you might have already immediately noticed so let us uh, say that uh, you know your uh, uh, sets are like you know n and k uh, finite sets where cardinality of n is equal to n and cardinality of k is equal to small k right now we want to count the number of functions let's say f that map from uh, the set n to set k where uh, first case is that uh, f is arbitrary right so f can be any function then uh, we say that okay we insist that f must be an injective function then you say that f must be a surjective function so uh, these are three uh, possible restrictions that you can put and then similarly we can say that okay the elements of uh, n or k may be identical or uh, they are uh, labeled to make it distinct okay so these are the four different uh, scenarios so 4 into 3 12 again so what are the cases here right elements of n elements of k right they are distinguishable or uh, indistinguishable right indistinguishable means that there is no label they are all identical distinguishable means that they are labeled they are all distinct and uh, then you can you can say that any any function is allowed or injective functions are only allowed or surjective functions are only allowed 
So these are the tool pins, and these precisely correspond to the previous cases of balls and pins. So you know, there is no difference. This is just uh, another way of looking at it. So we are going to count this, uh, you know, or find out this uh, cells by looking in one of these uh, cases, right? We will either look at as a function or as a balls and uh, boxes uh, question. And this will give you some, uh, you know, different kind of intuition. At least uh, I hope so. So uh, let us begin. The first case, right? So what is the first entry here that we want to fill, right? So that is that uh, we have uh, uh, distinguishable elements, right? Uh, distinct elements uh, in N and labeled uh, elements in K also. And then we want to say that any function. So if the function is any function, then obviously we have already done this. You know that is one of the first questions that we did. So this is the total number of functions. You know any any function is allowed. So how many functions are there from uh, uh, an n element set to a k element set, which is k raised to n? Right. So because uh, why? Because you know f of x for any element can be any of the k possible elements. So because any element can be mapped to any of the k elements. So each one has k choices. There are n elements, so k raised to n. Okay. <clears throat> And uh, in in the in the terminology of uh, urns and uh, uh, balls, we have cardinality of u choices for the first ball to be placed, right? And cardinality of u choices for the second ball to be placed because you know any possibility uh, is allowed, right? Uh, you can you can put as many as you want in any of the urns. Uh, and so therefore, the ball uh, has. That many choices, right? If, if you are going to put the first ball, you can say that okay, it can be any of the u. Second ball, again, it can be any of the u. Similarly, uh, you know, all the balls. So, therefore, cardinality of u power cardinality of b choices are there, which is what uh, we were uh, doing. Okay, so the first entry we have filled, right, which is k rise to n. Now, let us look at the next entry, right? Next entry means that let's say the in the same row, the second entry. So, which is the injective f, f must be injective. So, then what can we say? So, let us say that uh, n uh, is the, you know, set uh, x1, x2, etc., xn. Then, if you take the first element, right, f of x1 can be any of the k elements. But if you take uh, x2, you know, once you fix, uh, you know, an, uh, you know, image for uh, x1, x2 cannot be uh, that image, right? Because uh, we want it to be injected. So therefore, f of x2 must be any of the remaining k minus 1 element. So similarly, you continue, you will get k into k minus 1 into etc. k minus n plus 1, which is uh, the, uh, you know, uh, n permutation of the uh, k elements, right? So that is uh, uh, npk. Uh, no, k, uh, p, n. What was the notation that we use? Right, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is precisely what we want. Now, uh, when uh, n is greater than k, we will see that uh, this quantity is going to be 0 because you will have k minus uh, k coming there. So, therefore, uh, uh, this will cancel out and therefore uh, it will be 0. So, uh, if n greater than k, that will be 0, but otherwise it will be this one. But uh, we can just write it as uh, within bracket k and uh, outside k. Now, let us also look at the third case where uh, you know you want the functions to be. Uh, what is that? Uh, yeah, uh, surjective. Okay. Now, uh, to count the surjective functions, let us say that, let us assume that, you know, initially the elements of k uh, or the ends are unlabeled. So, we were looking at the labeled case, but let us look at the unlabeled case. Suppose they were unlabeled. Now, if the, if the boxes were unlabeled, then placing, uh, you know, the labeled balls to k boxes is basically partitioning the 
uh, you know, uh, the set, right, n to k blocks, right? Because we are just saying that, okay, they are on label, so which box contains what is not, uh, you know, important, but, you know, each box, how many elements or which elements are there, right? Uh, that is the uh, only thing that uh, makes a difference. So, therefore, it's basically partitioning the set uh, n into uh, exactly k blocks. Uh, so now that is if the uh, boxes were unlabeled. Now if the boxes were labeled, then it also matters, right, which box, uh, you know, this has gone to, right. So basically the order of the, order of the uh, partitions are also important, which means that you can, once you have the, you know, the order of the blocks are also important. So once you have the blocks, uh, you can permute them in any way. Right. So there are k uh, blocks, so therefore k factorial is to permute them. Therefore, we have k factorial into s and k possibilities to do this. Right. So uh, where s and k we define to be the number of ways to partition and n elements set into k blocks. So we have uh, filled up that entry, right? We can fill that entry now with uh, uh, s and k. Uh, into k factorial and the uh, and the fourth entry which is the entry below this uh, is going to be <coughs> the case where the balls are identical and the boxes are labeled right so the the elements of n are uh, identical right the balls are identical and the elements of k which corresponds to the uh, boxes or ends are uh, distinguishable or labeled now, in this case, you know, what matters is that how many uh, balls each end gets because, you know, the balls are all identical. So, you know, which ball goes where is not important, but only how many balls are going to each of the labeled ends. Right? So, therefore, you can think of the ends as the, you know, variables, uh, you know, which takes the values, right, like which is the number of balls. Right. So, this is basically like uh, u1 plus u2 plus extra uk where ua is the number of uh, balls that the ith urn gets. Right. So, therefore, and this must come to n because we are distributing n balls to the k uh, urns. And we already know how to solve this. Right. We have done this. That is the non-negative integer solutions to the uh, uh, equation which is k plus n minus 1 choose n. So, we have uh, a solution for that. Now, this is also uh, the number of uh, n element multisets that can be made from a k element set, right? Because, uh, you know, instead of looking at, uh, uh, you know, as choosing the balls to be placed, you, you choose the urns, right? And, and then decide, okay, this ball must, you know, uh, how many balls go to each of the urns, right? So, this is basically choosing the urns and uh, that, uh, can we look at as a uh, the number of ways of forming a, a, a multi set from a k elements, right? K element set is the, the set of urns, right? From this, you are going to uh, you want to select uh, you know some copies of each of the urns so that you get an n element multi set, which is the, the total number of uh, total number of uh, balls, right? So uh, so, therefore, uh, you can think of this as the uh, number of ways of selecting uh, an uh, n element multi set from a k element set. Right? That is also k plus n minus 1 choose n. So, we already saw this both uh, notions for this uh, parameter and this matches. Right? Okay. So, therefore, we have filled up uh, these many entries. Right? So, we have you know first four entries we have filled up k raised to n. Uh, for the arbitrary uh, functions and then uh, k plus n minus 1 choose n where the elements or the balls uh, elements of n or the balls are uh, unlabeled <coughs> okay fifth case which means that we have uh, injective f right so injective f means that you have you are saying that you have at most uh, one now, so which means that each end can get at most one ball, right? 
so we need to choose which uh, n of the currents can get the balls right so you are saying that you you have to distribute the uh, unlabeled balls right to distinguishing uh, bins so which means that each bin or n so so each n now can get at most one ball right so which means that you have to select which of these uh, you know uh, which of the n uh, uh which of the n uh, earns are going to get the bots right because uh you know each one can only get one so therefore and the balls are identical so it doesn't matter so you just choose uh, an n element subset of the total number of k element uh, subset uh, you know which are the earns which are available right so this function is injective we need to decide uh, which n elements among the k elements of k can have three images right so that is what choosing uh, n of this uh, earns from the total available k earns so that is the uh, that is the uh, solution so we have k choose n okay now <clears throat> what is the uh, next entry right so if the function is surjective instead of injective then what can we say so which means that each uh, box or each n can get at most one ball right inside uh, i mean uh, at least one ball right so, yeah because we were looking at at most one ball in the previous case yeah so you should have at least one ball uh, because it is surjective so since each box must have uh, at least one, uh, any balls and uh, you know is identical to any other ball. So uh, what we can say is that okay, let us put one ball each to the k uh, you know ends first, so that you know we are and they are identical, right? So I can just distribute them. And then now once I do this, you know, uh, then uh, you know my question is now uh, reduced to a previously solved question. Right, like see, I have made sure that it is going to be subjective by selecting one ball for each of the uh, each of the ends. Right, so every box must have at least one. So I put one in uh, in each of them. Now the remaining, whichever way I am going to distribute, the function has already become subjective. Right. So how many ways I can do this? That is the uh, different uh, ways I can do this. That is going to be the number because this one is. A precondition that I need to fill up each of the ends at least one uh, with at least one volume, right? So therefore, once you once you take away, right? So k balls are now used to fill up each of the k bins, right? So you have n minus k remaining balls, and that can be distributed, you know, without any restriction, uh, and uh, you know, distributing without restriction, uh, that is basically something that we already did, right? In case four. That we want n minus k element uh, uh, multi sets uh, from a k element set, right? So we have n minus k balls are there, and then you are going to uh, put it into n minus uh, a to k uh, of these things, and then that is basically choosing the earns, right? So basically choosing uh, an n minus k element multi set from the uh, available uh, k uh, from the uh, k of the earns. Uh, this is precisely what we did in case four, right? Case four was precisely uh, doing this, right? That uh, you had uh, uh, identical balls and boxes are labeled, and then how many ways you can do this? And precisely, that is the way to do it. And in in this case, it happens to be uh, a distribution of n minus k because we have already used k to uh, fill up the boxes with one uh, ball each, right? So that is now k plus uh, n minus k minus 1 choose n minus k right because uh, uh, we want to yeah we start with the uh, k uh, element set and then we want to make n minus k uh, element multi sets and what is this value which is n minus 1 right on the top and then uh, choose n minus k will become also k minus 1 uh, when you take the complement so therefore you get n minus 1 choose k minus 1. 
<clears throat> so another uh, way to look at the same is uh, you know once you see that it is n minus 1 to square minus 1 we get this idea so that uh, so imagine uh, you have this urns right all the or the boxes the ends are uh, uh, as, as kids, okay, and the balls are uh, as ledus, right? We already solved this question, right? Ledus and uh, kids. So we want to distribute the uh, ledus to the kids so that everybody is happy, right? Everybody gets at least one. And uh, uh, you know because that is what we want when we want surjections, right? Every uh, so basically the uh, the ledus has to be distributed to the uh, kids who are the urns. So how many ways we can do this? We did this already, but uh, let us uh, review that. So we have placed the ledus in a, in a line, right? We have this uh, ledus in a line, and then we let the kids uh, go from the beginning and then pick some ledus and then stop and then continue with the next person. So the first child always starts at the you know in its beginning position. So therefore, you need to decide among the remaining remaining uh, how many. So there were n ledu, so therefore n minus one uh, positions, right? Gaps. Uh, we have to decide where the where each of the remaining kids, right? The first kid already started, is going to start, right? So the remaining k minus one kids are going to start. So that is the way to choose k minus one positions, right? From the n minus one available uh, gaps. So that is n minus one choose k minus one. So this is another way to look at the same question. So uh, we have filled uh, uh, the two first two rows. Now the remaining two, uh, right? So there are six is done. Six more to go. Okay. So uh, what is the next entry? So the seventh uh, entry is that you have uh, what is the question? You have uh, labeled balls, right? Colored balls, and you have uh, identical boxes. So since the boxes are uh, identical, uh, you know. So if you look at the function uh, going from n to k, so this function is captured fully uh, by the non-empty pre-images uh, of the elements of uh, k, right? So you take the elements of k and then uh, look at the non-empty pre-images, right? Like some of them may not be mapped to anything, right? Uh, because you know the the function is arbitrary but uh, uh, if you take all the pre images of the elements you are going to get the set n but the set, the set n is now if you if you collect them with respect to the its image uh, what we are going to get is basically a partition of n right so this basically defines a partition of the set n and the number of blocks is at most k because we are only having at most k boxes or k bins uh, what we are going to see is that you have, uh, uh, you know, you are looking at different ways of partitioning the set n into k at most k blocks, right? So that is the summation l equal to one to k uh, s of n comma l, right? So that is s of n comma one plus s of n comma two plus etc. s of n comma uh, k. So <clears throat> we get this seventh uh, uh, entry. So what is the next entry, which is f is injective, right? So we have distinguishable uh, balls and uh, identical boxes and injective function. So <clears throat> now, see if the number of, uh, you know, we are looking at injective functions. If the number of balls are more than the number of boxes, there is no way to find an injective function, right? The cardinality of n is greater. So therefore, uh, we have only, uh, you know, this uh, functions, uh, injective functions, if the cardinality is uh, of uh, cardinality of n is less than or equal to the cardinality of k, right? And how many are there, right? So if the, uh, there is only one way because the boxes are all identical, right? Now you are going to, uh, you know, partition the ball so that each box has less than or equal to 1, right? So if you are going to put less than or equal to 1, then uh, to the boxes, uh, then there is only one way to do that, right? So you, you, you know, you, you just uh, put the uh, balls to the boxes. That is it, right? So you just distribute them 
and then uh, that is it because the walls are unlabeled there is no other uh, you know way to distinguish so uh, the answer is that uh, it is 1 if n is less than or equal to k and is 0 if n is greater than k okay the ninth entry is that if f is surjective right so if f is subjective then uh, we observe that f inverse a is uh, non empty for all uh, uh, for all uh, a in k so thus the uh, you know partition has exactly k blocks right because each of the element has a p image and uh, there are k elements in k so therefore uh, there is exactly k blocks each each pre image defines a block right that we saw earlier so therefore there is exactly s of n comma k right that is the by definition that we have done the number of subjective functions from two and an, from an element set to a k element set so this uh, defines uh, uh, yeah, this counts the number of uh, uh, subjections when the when the uh, when the boxes are identical. Okay. Now, what happens uh, if the if the elements of N are uh, uh, are indistinguishable, right? And the elements of uh, K are also indistinguishable. This means that all the balls are identical all the boxes are identical so how do you how do you count in this case <clears throat> so so since uh, k right is you know the urns are unlabeled you know we can partition n into uh, you know uh, like uh, at most k blocks but now the elements of n are basically identical right so it doesn't matter what are the elements because they are all identical but it matters how many are there right so therefore basically it is partitioning the cardinality right the uh, the number of elements to you know uh, to blocks so that is basically integer partition so number of ways of partitioning it but then you can have at most uh, k blocks because you know the function is arbitrary uh, and therefore, as in the previous case, we have summation uh, p of n comma uh, l, where l ranges from one to k, where p of n l is the number of ways of partitioning n to exactly l blocks. Right? So integer partition. And what is the eleventh question? Well, eleven is. Uh, as we said in in the case of eight right when the balls uh, when the boxes are unlabeled you know uh, there is precisely one way to do it when n is less than or equal to k and zero ways if n is greater than k the same thing holds here because uh, again you know it doesn't matter whether the balls are uh, labeled or unlabeled right even they are unlabeled there is precisely one way to do it and uh, if n is less than or equal to k and otherwise no way to do it. find an injection and the final question, uh, question number 12, is uh, again similar to 9, but now integer partitioning to exactly k blocks because the function is a surjection. So we have p of n comma k. So we have the uh, full uh, uh, table here now, right? So we have, uh, you know, the balls which are distinguishable or indistinguishable, uh, the boxes which are distinguishable or, uh, you know, uh, labeled. Then uh, you have any function. Right, which means that unrestricted uh, distribution. You have at most one per box, which is injective functions. You have at least one per box, which is subjective function. Right. So these are the uh, twelve cases, and uh, we have filled up all the entries. Right? And we, each of these we have done uh, in our previous classes. So I think uh, that uh, is basically like you know collecting uh, so many different counting questions uh into you know into the same framework right you know of just uh, distributing balls to bins uh, which is uh, which is a nice way to look at this idea. so that is the reason we looked at it and uh, a couple of homework questions uh, so one question uh, is to count the number of uh, compositions of an integer let's say n uh, strictly greater than one having an even number of even parts. Okay. 
then the second question is uh, give a combinatorial proof uh, why are uh, distributing n identical words to k uh, labeled boxes uh, is the same as uh, you know uh, basically the number of uh, 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 distributions of uh, k minus 1 identical words to n plus 1 labeled boxes okay so distributing n identical words to k labeled boxes uh, and uh, distributing k minus 1 identical words to n plus 1 labeled boxes apparently uh, is the same right like in, I mean, in the same in that like you know they they have there is a bijection between them you know they, they count the same number or yeah, so the cardinalities are the same, uh, which is kind of interesting to see, right? Like, you know, you know, why should they be the same, right? So, can you find a, a combinatorial proof? Of course, uh, you know, uh, if you want to give an algebraic proof, I think it's very easy. There is nothing there, uh, but we need a combinatorial proof. Why they are uh, identical? Ah, okay so that is it so we uh, you know we have uh, we have uh, completed the homeworks uh, parts for this uh, question and then uh, let us uh, uh, see in the next class